Hey everyone, welcome back to But Why Though, the podcast, where we talk about the things in pop culture that people say matter, and we ask the question, but why though? Before we get started, we wanted to let you guys know that at the end of the month of August, we will be leaving SoundCloud, but you can still find us on iTunes, Google Play Music, Stitcher, TuneIn, and YouTube, as well as a lot of your other podcasting apps. But if you have any concerns, feel free to email us at info at butwhythoughpodcast.com. Enjoy the show. So in today's episode, we are talking about cosplay. And if you don't know what that is, think back to any time you've been on a convention floor, you've seen people selling video games, or you've just seen somebody walking around as your favorite character. That's pretty much it. And we're going to go into why it matters and a little bit of history. As always, I'm your host, Kate, and I'm here with Adrian. Hey, how's it going? And Matt. Hello. And with a super, super special guest, Alessandra, a.k.a. Ali from the Rick and Ali stream. How are you doing, Allie? Hey, I'm doing good. Um, yeah, so we like to start things out with a question. And our questions today are, how did you first learn about cosplay? Have you ever cosplayed? And if you haven't, would you cosplay? You want to start off, Allie? Sure, sure. I would say I learned, I, well, not learn about cosplay, but I saw, you know, back in high school when everyone was wearing the Naruto headbands. Oh, and yeah. Yeah, th those were the days where everyone had those headbands and everything. And um, that's when I learned a little bit more about cosplay and conventions, because I didn't go to a convention until I was in my early 20s. It just never occurred to me. <laughs> and then once, uh, once I finally went to one, um, then I started wanting to get into cosplay. Uh, I have cosplayed before, and my first time ever was like, I got way too ambitious and I tried doing four for a big convention, like my first biggest <laughs> convention ever, and it was a failure. So <laughs> yeah, just everything fell apart at the last minute. Um, kind of learned my lesson and realizing that flying to another state was so much like costume work was not smart. And most of the time at big conventions, you'll want to spend a lot of money. Mm, yeah. This is very true. Yeah, yes. no, no, for real. I pretty much go yeah. for the shopping. I won't. Yes. I'll be straight up honest. The shopping. Sundays when everything's on sale. Exactly. Spend like $600. More than $600. Yeah. <laughs> I like black out completely, especially when it comes <laughs> to spending. But um, uh, one successful cosplay that I did really well for Alamo City Comic Con was Mad Max, the Fury Road. Uh, and I had a friend with me. He did Nux. So I was Max Rakotansky, and he was Nux. And nice. Yeah. Right now, Rick and I are actually planning on going to Pack South, and we're pulling uh, a costume that we were about to, like, send to the grave because we just realized we can't take it to New York <laughs> Comic Con. It was just too much. But here at Pax, we could totally do it since uh, we are in Texas. So nice. not much traveling is involved. <laughs> Is it a secret what you're going to do? Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Well, it's one big one, but... Um, it sounds I'm, awesome, though. I'm, I'm excited secret. for it. I'm yeah. Big, and that makes me happy. Very excited. Detailed. Very, very <laughs> detailed. Uh, very tedious, too. <laughs> but um, one really simple one that I, I don't mind sharing will definitely be... Um, I don't know if anyone's played Crypt of the Necrodancer, but the main girl with, like, the shovel and everything. So I'm going to do that one just for, like, a Friday. Just easy going. But Saturday, the main day, uh, definitely will be, like, a big video game, obviously related cosplay. Nice. Well, Matt and I will be there for sure. We just got our Pax South tickets. Um, not sure if Adrian has got his yet. Or if he's going, or <laughs> how far are we going? It's just so far in the future, and we're yeah. eight hours away that who knows? But we did it last minute last year, so this is true. It's, it's, <laughs> Was it like a week, we'll the weekend before it happened? Yeah, basically, yeah. <laughs> so we'll probably be there, and it's fine. It's have like fun. a cosplay done by then, so you know, more incentive to go. Spontaneous uh, convention showing. It's always fun. Uh, so, what about you, Matt? Um, how did I learn about cosplay? Well, obviously. Uh, I guess playing games and growing up, I saw all the conventions and everybody dressing up and all their cosplay stuff. I've ever never actually cosplayed before. 
I do dress up for Halloween. I think it's like frowned upon if I say it in that context. But, <laughs> <laughs> um, but uh, would I ever cosplay? I mean, I wouldn't mind, but I, I honestly say I'm not going to take the time or want to spend the amount of money into making a costume. So if somebody wants to make me one, I will <laughs> gladly wear it. But unfortunately, I do not want to make my own. And I think that for a lot of people, I think that's the biggest part and the biggest challenge and the funnest part of cosplaying. It's tedious. It's really tedious. I mean, putting all the work into it, it's freaking expensive. It's a really expensive hobby. Yeah. <laughs> I am not kidding. Like, just one sheet of Warbla, um, depending on how big, it could cost you like a hundred bucks. Oof. This is what I said. If someone wants to send me a costume, <laughs> <laughs> no shame there. Just don't want to spend all the money or put all the tedious time into working. No, it, it is a lot of work. I, we were trying to do one last year to take to New York Comic Con, and then, like, aside from wanting to spend too much money, halfway through it, we're like, oh, I'm tired. I don't want to <laughs> do this. <laughs> yeah. Um, so I guess for me, um, well, for me, I think I actually found out about cosplay very similar to Ali's, um, Naruto headbands, and anime. Mm-hmm. Uh, like, I loved anime, and I loved anime so much that, like, not only did I just spend hours and hours on, like, fan fiction forums, but I also just started looking up, like, there's got to be a live-action movie somewhere, and if you Google, like, live-action Inuyasha or live-action Sailor Moon, most of, most of the time it's a lot of cosplay, and that's kind of how I, I learned that that was a thing. Um, and then, of course, like, seeing... Um, the old pictures of like the cosplay model who did Lara Croft uh, when they were um, marketing those games also kind of sparked my interest. And then I have cosplayed. I have not cosplayed like Ali has cosplayed. Um, I bought all of my stuff. I, I think the most I did was like dye my gun belt for my Deadpool costume. And then I, so I've done Deadpool and Lara Croft, but like any girl can do Lara Croft because it's just, you know, some khakis and a blue tank top. Hey, but you um, pulled it off. I saw the pictures. They look great. Thank you. I was so happy. I, although it was like 40 degrees in Texas, which only happened on the day I wore that. So. That would happen, right? <laughs> yep. Because um, that was for Austin Comic Con uh, 2013. But yeah, no, so it was one day it was Deadpool. And then the second day was Lara Croft. And I was freezing my butt off in all of them. Even Deadpool? Even Deadpool, because it was, it was a cat suit. So oh, it was okay. really, so it was it, like it was really, really thin. <laughs> that's why I figured, yeah. Pro tip: utility belts are awesome for snoring candy bars and snacks when you're walking the con floor. I did that. Yeah, you need I, to survive. <laughs> dang, being at a convention all day, not eating and drinking, like you're gonna die. Like, oh, you're gonna be yeah. out. It can be oh, overwhelming. Yeah. yeah. So, Adrian, how about you? Uh, I'll back Matt up in his Halloween stuff. <laughs> because whenever we do like Halloween costumes and like still to this day, like my parents don't do and I don't do like, oh, I'm going to be a mummy. <laughs> it's usually like character base. Like my mom this year is doing um, Linda Carter, Wonder Woman and stuff. Oh, nice. So like That's really cool. And she's going to put the effort into it that she would probably do if she ever went to conventions. But they're just like not those kind of people. So like I've like when I was a kid, like I dressed up as uh, Darth Maul and I did all the face painting. And my, my mom made those costumes for me. Uh, as like an adult, I've never cosplayed. I think my first, outside of like Halloween costume, you know, homemade stuff, I think my first like legitimate, like, oh man, these people put hundreds of hours into their cosplay was in uh, BlizzCon the first time I went, which was like the second year they did it. Oh yeah. And, and it was ridiculous. And this chick rode in on a mechanical turtle and it was ridiculous. <laughs> And was, well, mechanical that's turtle. the best cosplay I've ever seen in my entire life. <laughs> uh, like her cosplay was so good, they had to change the rules of the BlizzCon comic like co uh, cosplay contest. So like you can't do stuff like that anymore. <laughs> oh wow! <laughs> like, like that's like how good her cosplay was. Um, yeah, so I've never cosplayed at an actual convention. I don't know if I ever will after helping my significant other Stefani with her cosplay for Widowmaker that we did that she did earlier this year at El Paso Comic-Con because, oh my God, it was so much work to put that together. And the fact that she got stopped every five seconds for pictures, I don't know if I can handle that. I have no, yeah. idea, I have no idea how she did that on heels with that 
you know, 25 pound Widowmaker gun. I have no idea how she did it. The two months, two and a half months of like just strenuous work. I don't know if I could do that, but I like doing the handler stuff. So I think I'm just fine with that. I'll just help her with her cosplays and just, you know, take pictures and stuff. I'm good with that. <laughs> Can we oh. cosplay as the Bobby Hill Sailor Moon? <laughs> <laughs> um, I would I would pay you guys to do that. I would make you the costumes that. to do that. Actually, I, I would cosplay because one of my big things is I want to join the five oh first. I just need the money to put into like <laughs> costumes for them. I think that's the only thing I would do because I like and we'll talk we're obviously gonna talk about this later, but I like the community service aspect of cosplaying. So like if I ever yeah. did, it'd be for that, not necessarily for conventions because okay. I want to live through the convention. So, uh, like we do in all our other episodes, there is one person leading. That's his I, the leader of today's episode. <laughs> um, so, what is cosplay? Uh, so, cosplay itself is a Japanese uh, portmanteau. Um, do you all know what a portmanteau is? No. Yeah, I know <laughs> what it is. I just want to know if you know what it means. <laughs> yes. I do. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so... Uh, a, a portmanteau is, uh, it's a shortened version of a word. And so this is, which I guess I probably could have just said a shortened version of the word costume play. Um, I just really like that word. Um, and this is actually really common in Japanese. So uh, the Japanese have this style of abbreviation where you take the first two moras. And so like that, those are two parts of the first two parts of a word and you pair them together to make a new word. And so in this case, it would be kasu, I think it's kasu pure, and it gets translated for us as cosplay um, or costume play. So cosplay is a little bit more than just dressing up as a character. So a little bit more than Halloween. Um, it is pretty, it is coined as a performance art. Um, and the reason it's performance art is because when people dress up as their favorite characters from films, TV shows, video games, books, or comics, they pretty much try to embody the character. So they act like the character, act them out. Um, they try to be as authentic as they can to the way these costumes look and really just bring that character to life. So more than just um, just showing up to, to um, for like a, I don't know. I mean, I guess like listening to what you said, your parents, uh, your parents do, Adrian, yeah, it actually think, sounds really similar. No, yeah, I think it just depends on like how much effort you put into it. I mean, not even that, like, I think if you put work into a costume and then you go and, you know, present yourself as that person, I count that as cosplay regardless yeah. if it's Halloween yeah. or not. Like, Safani for Halloween this year is probably going to go as Widowmaker. Yeah. And, like, you know, just because it's Halloween doesn't make that not – because she, tell me, like, she put hundreds of hours into it. So I, I think that still counts oh, even yeah. if it's on Halloween. Yeah, yeah no, definitely. Um, so my bad for stepping in is that. What makes it really different from other stuff is, like Adrian said, it's the time you put into it, as well as the devotion that you have for inhabiting the character while you're wearing it. Um, and this cosplay is also used to explain, uh, is used for different types of role playing. Um, so if you know what LARP is, mm -hmm. uh, live action role playing, uh, that is also cosplay, which I really want to LARP. So if you're in Austin and know of a LARPing group, please at me, because I want in on that. I'm down. Oh, that'd be so fun. I know. Rick Rick would be down. No problem. <gasps> yes. We need to do this. So moving right along, the actual term cosplay was coined in 1984 by Nobuyuki Takahashi of Studio Hard while at Worldcon. And Worldcon is the World Science Fiction Convention, but it grew out of what was formerly known before this moment as fan costuming. And this was done or is tracked all the way back to the very first sci-fi convention, which was a uh, world sci-fi convention of 1939. So the reason he created this word was because in Japanese, the word for costume or masquerade, which is one of the terms that had been used to describe fans who dressed up, means something very specific in Japanese. So masquerade is specifically somebody in an aristocratic costume. And so since this was something different, he needed a way to portray that. And that's how he coined the term. So cosplaying involves... Uh, a whole bunch of stuff, makeup effects, prosthetics, foam crafting, metalwork, sewing. They're pretty much any way that you can create and bring something to life. That's what you use for cosplay. Um, Ali, what kind of stuff have you done to make your cosplays? Oh, dang, where to begin? 
Uh, yeah, I mean, like, War Bluff, definitely a lot of foam. We're talking about uh, buckles. Um, oh, there's, like, this certain kind of foam that you use uh, as, like, a mat. And you can use that for weapons. Um, there's Maybe clear any War Any metal bluff. work. Any I metal work? I wish. I was oh. talking into that. <laughs> Some, metal work. Like, Some oh. welding. Yes. One day. Get that, get that through the door. Yeah. <laughs> but no, I'm just, I've done a lot of stuff. Um, you know, Goodwill is really helpful for stuff you need. Oh, um, nice. Yeah, fabrics, like you can get, um, for example, sheets. If you find like really cheap sheets somewhere, that will help you out. Uh, 3D printing and all that, that's pretty cool too. Uh, insulation foam. Carving, what? yeah, insulation yeah. foam. You can use that That's for like super cool. Weapons. Yeah. <clears throat> so you got so like cosplayers are the craftiest of the crafty. Yeah, if you think about it, yeah, and some of it's like scientific because you can even use uh, what is it, LED lights. Ah, and that's make things right. glow. You got resin. You can use resin. Um, it's 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 pretty wild. <laughs> Like, yeah, I, feel, I feel so official. Like, I, know, I know everything she's talking about. <laughs> we did all of that for Stefani's costume. Like we did the foam crafting, we did the sewing, we did like the resin for her, like for the the headpiece and stuff. Like intuitively, it's kind of simple. It's just the man hours putting into it. It just is is the hard part. Yeah, for sure. Make what? the one. Yeah, because the foam, <laughs> you just like get EVA foam, like the stuff that you were in your classroom, like as a kid. Those like little things. The Mats like oh, yeah. Under, yeah, and then you heat it up and then you can foam it into whatever you want. Like, it's crazy. I'm just not patient enough to do it. Yeah. Luckily, Stefani <laughs> is. So, I guess what what piece took you the longest when you cosplayed that you made? Oh, dang. Uh, it's definitely because we're, we're in the process of making, you know, some. So, I would definitely yeah. say, uh, I'll just give out a little hint um, crossbow. Ah, but a nice. crossbow that actually I make it to where it can open. So it's open oh. and close, yeah. Dang. Yeah, I could not do that, and that is why I bought mine. But yeah, so obviously there, there's so much that goes into cosplay that I tried to come up with a good list, but the thing is, is like Ali said, like it's pretty much anything you can use. Like the list is limitless. It's yeah. wherever you can like be resourceful and find ways to bring these things to life. Um, if you can use it and you know how to use it, because if you don't, you're, you're going to be a little bit SOL. That's what I'm going <laughs> to say. And a lot of it is trial and error. Because uh, you'll find out what works best for you and what does it. And sometimes you'll realize you don't need to use like warbler. You can use foam. But if you seal the foam correctly, I mean, you'll be good. If you don't seal it well, then... It it'll it'll not look so good. <laughs> <laughs> so foam would be the cheaper option to warbler, right? Yeah, yeah. And there's a lot of videos out there. YouTube is like the best uh, resource to do some research because then you could see how uh, things work on a video versus like reading it. And I mean, foam is foam is a cheaper option. Uh, warbler is good. Uh, it does have a grainy, like if you're wanting to do something that looks like metal, it's grainy, so it's not going to look that good. Uh, uh, Black Warbler is a lot more forgiving, and it's a little bit easier to use. Nice. I think, too, like on the on the YouTube aspect, um, cosplay is one of the big reasons that we have Twitch Creative now, too. Exactly, yeah. Um, just the cosplay community kind of like... Twitch realized, oh wow, this is these are this is like a really big need. Um, uh, we've been talking about a lot about Stefani. Stefani has had her has her own creative channel, right? Yeah, I mean the reason like why she did is because we watched um, streamers on creative, and she like asked them questions, and they gave her answers, and we were like, oh, like watching, like oh, like oh, that's how we do that part, and it feels like just a little bit more authentic and like interactive when you're doing it off of Twitch than like YouTube, which I really liked. Because like she asked like a question about um, like glue, like what kind of glue should she use? And then she gave the cosplayer we were watching, uh, Cara Corvus. I don't know if she did like this amazing Farah uh, cosplay from uh, Overwatch at the time, and she gave her like this long explanation that was like way more than she asked for. 
and it like helped her in the long run so much. So we love, love Twitch creative specifically for the cosplay stuff. That's I me. Mean, that's why I watch it. Nice. I yes. watch it for emotes. <laughs> <laughs> I do like to watch people make emotes. I know that's a little off, but yeah. <laughs> that's right. Uh, shout out to DJ Tech Live and Creative Sundays. So the fact that you can use whatever you want to make costumes, it also means that you're not limited to just the way these characters are portrayed in the game. You can change them up. Um, and so there is also like some sexy cosplay that happens quite a bit. Yeah. <laughs> and it is actually something that is really important, I would say, to how cosplay has developed and become this really mainstream thing. Like, Because it, it, now it's no longer somebody like i mean we're still i mean it's still portrayed like fanboys and stuff like that but yeah so a lot of like these sexy cosplays have actually led to really lucrative careers there's a section of professional cosplayers who make a lot of money selling prints and doing meet and greets and stuff like this just because of the the way they present characters um in a in a more uh, i guess i don't want to say sexualized but like a like a, a, a sexy way like uh jessica negri yaya han um yaya han does, doesn't do it as much uh jessica negri for sure um and they make really good livings on it and i say livings because it's it's a full-time job <laughs> yeah like hands down if i could just make cosplay all day and get get that i would um but that all like all this being said too as open as the conventions are for cosplay some conventions have put in strict rules on what type of cosplay you can wear into uh, into the convention expo hall itself um phoenix comic con and pax are two of the really notable ones and they've issued really strict regula uh, regulations in order to keep the environment family friendly. And that means, uh, I can speak for the PAX one specifically, um, was they don't want, if you're gonna portray a character who shows skin, um, because obviously the way a lot of characters are drawn in the video game world, it, a lot of it is that you don't need to sexualize that character, it's already done. <laughs> um, was their their guideline was you could not be showing more than what that character was showing and then obviously they had a threshold for which characters got the pass um like there wasn't going to be any witch blade there um mm -hmm. or kill a kill but there you know they kind of got to be the last word on it and it was really murky that being said they've also gotten rid of stuff like booth babes and uh, in order to create an environment that somebody's 10 year old can pass by, um, which I personally, I don't know how you guys feel about that. I personally don't understand because if they walk in the mall, they see giant Victoria's Secret ads. Yeah, That's like true, I respect, yeah. The, yeah, I respect the hustle, man. Like, especially after doing Stefani's, like if you make a really, really good one that looks kind of sexy, like I respect the hustle. And if someone wants oh, to yeah. buy it, let, like, let them make their money buying it there. Like, because you're right. Like, you walk through a mall, like you see skimpier stuff walking through a mall than you will at a comic con. Yeah, and it's like fifty yeah. feet tall and yeah. on an entire wall. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I agree too. And the fact that Pack South sells water bottles for thirty five dollars—that's supposed to be family <laughs> friendly, but we have to crack yeah. down on booth babes. Yeah, booth babes can't make money, but you're, you're gonna charge me forty dollars for some coasters. Yeah, <laughs> let's say packs. Yes. <laughs> As a cosplayer, Allie, what do you think? No, yeah, like I, I, I absolutely agree too. Cause they do put a lot of work in, and I, I mean, I'm impressed by some of it. And oh, yeah. like you said, Victoria's Secret ads, like several of them all over the place too. Exactly. Like, come on, calm down. Yeah, cause El Paso Comic Con, I guess, had cosplayers that I guess that she would classify as booth babes, I guess. But Stefani recognized them right away because when she was looking through her, like looking on how to do her stuff she, for like the sewing purposes of it because yeah obviously like they're really good at sewing stuff um since they're not doing like foam crafting and stuff she recognized them right away and then talked to them for like an hour about like how to sew stuff properly and stuff so you know if if el paso comic-con cracked down she wouldn't have met those cosplayers that she's followed you know, this entire time and for most people it's uh a lot of those cos cosplayers we like idolize or like we oh, get yeah. inspiration from so um, and I guess that's kind of a but why, though, I think because we're about to transition into that. Um, <laughs> it matters because 
cosplay matters because it is this ultimate form of like expression through something that you love and and it's not it, it's a way to bridge your your creative side with your fandom um and i mean honestly it's everywhere i read when i was doing research they were saying that cosplay although it's been here for forever it's in the midst of an explosion like now you're seeing people not it's not only the professionals showing up it's kind of like how it was at rtx like it's people who are cosplaying for the first time but they feel totally free in doing it and they bought a wig or they bought a shirt and they you know they drew some emblems on it like cause cosplay has reached to the extent as well now where like if you go onto pinterest there are hundreds and hundreds of little like outfits that people put together uh, so that you can cosplay during the day. So like you can cosplay and look like Belle, but it's like a day wear cosplay and you're not really wearing like a full Belle outfit. It's just something that resembles what she wore. Yeah, um, like uh, I think it's called Disney Bound. Yes, yeah, yeah, Disney, Disney Bound. And then there's casual cosplay too. Yep. So and, and it'd be it, like just clothes of the character and you're out and about just, you know, you're dressed normally, but you're also like a uh, costume. Yeah, exactly. And, and I think that it, it's cosplay has just become so open. And I think the idea of being able to do this, like, the idea of being able to be your favorite character has just really stuck with everybody. And that's why, you know, you just want like, um, and her universe, which is a really big, um, they started a few years back, um, but they make geek and nerd fashion for women because like our choices for like superhero t-shirts and stuff like that are usually pretty limited. Um, and so a lot of the stuff that they make is made to directly resemble the costumes of people in movies. And it's a way to wear something that is day wear, but totally resembles it. Like they released these Wonder Woman boots and this Wonder Woman leather jacket when the movie came out. And I, I wanted to give them all my money. <laughs> <laughs> um, so beyond just the, I guess the other but why though is why would you put 200 hours into a costume? And one of the big things too is cosplay is also really, really competitive. Um, so a lot of conventions have large competitions with pretty large pots uh, to win. And the base for the competition side is you have accuracy, so that's hair, makeup, costume, props, and um, and how you look on stage, craftsmanship, how well it's made, maneuverability, functionality, quality of the materials, the details you put in, amount of effort, and percentage of handmade to bought or printed items is actually something that they've added pretty recently um, where they're favoring handmade crafts versus other things. And then there's presentation. So that would be acting, posture, your movements, you knowing the iconic phrases and using them and pretty much just embodying the character from start to finish. And then the last one is audience impact. So eye contact, making use of the stage and engaging your audience when you're being judged. And this is pretty much the standard for cosplay competition judging. Um, I, have you ever competed in a cosplay competition? I have not, no. Um... I've thought about it, but no, usually when I do it, it's just for fun. Yeah, because for me, it's more like a creative outlet, because even though the one I'm working on, it is, you know, video game related, but it's actually going to be like my own twist. Ah. So for me, it's just like, uh, just to have fun and a creative outlet. Adrian, I know Stefani competed in the El Paso Comic Con one, and uh, how do you, like, I guess... Did she talk to you about like why she wanted to do the competition and stuff like that? Right. And how like the like I guess the backgrounds, because like obviously like is there more stuff that goes into it for the yeah, uh, I, judging? Um so for those who don't know my wife, she's super competitive and like <laughs> likes competing and stuff like this. So when she heard there was a competition, it kind of like upped her like level of detail and stuff. So I think the competition like the fact that she was competing helped her be like more perfectionist when it come came to her her cosplay um el paso comic con is kind of a smaller comic con so it's not like um the level of like detail in what goes into like the judging isn't nearly what it is for say like a phoenix comic con or like a new york comic con which we found out doing it so yaya han was there um and usually like 
they they go the day before or whatever, and for like a couple hours before, and like they'll the judges will specifically look at like the costumes and and things like that for uh, like a quick a quick overview up close because all they can see during the actual competition is them for kind of far away to do like the presentation and stuff. Um, so there was another Widowmaker there and who beat Stefani out for like that category. And I personally think Stefani's was better in terms of like her gun was better. She did uh, like a lot more foam crafting, but we went to go talk to Yaya Han the next day. And she said, well, if I would have known that you guys, you know, 3D, 3D printed that gun from scratch, if I would have seen uh, you're like sewing up close and stuff, you probably would have won. But since we don't really have like the craftsmanship part of it in that competition, she kind of lost points there. So I would just say like, if you're look interested in competing in contests, just look into the rules and see what goes into it. Because if it's like really just more of like a presentation thing, like the El Paso Comic Con one is, then put more emphasis into that. And look who's judging too. Um, Yaya Han is a lot more about the, um, like the sewing and stuff, just that's what like she normally does. So a firefly like dress cosplay beat out like a seven foot Groot for <laughs> like best in show, which just blew basically everybody's mind in the hall. But Yaya Han's the one doing the judging, so she cares more about how much they sewed it and how much time went into that, opposed to a seven foot Groot and like a eight foot Gundam who both lost to a dress, <laughs> which blew my mind. But that, it was fun. She, she really liked it, and she wants to do it again because she likes – she liked being stopped every five seconds, but she also liked the competing aspect of it because it, like, want, makes her upper game to do better next time and everything like that. Definitely varies. Like, obviously, the bigger the convention, the more that's going to go into it. Like, she was go- interested in doing the Phoenix Comic Con one, and for, like, the Phoenix Comic Con, you had to, like, send in pictures of your progress – it had to be like 70% handmade and all this stuff. But for the El Paso Comic Con, she just showed up and I mixed like a 30 second clip of her walk so she can walk across the stage. So it definitely <laughs> varies. And then you have ones like the BlizzCon one where this chick literally drove across on a giant walking turtle. And then like they had to change the rules because of that. So it definitely <laughs> varies for sure. I think TwitchCon had that giant Squidbillies monster truck, right? Oh yeah. man, that sounds awesome. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It, like the the cosplay itself was a giant monster truck with a guy inside with a hat that was the Squid Billies guy. Wow, I like that. <laughs> I like that a lot, actually. I'm just super excited. I kind I kind of have an idea of what you're doing, like character wise. I think just from what you said, I'm super excited to see it at PAX. Now I want to go to PAX even more now. <laughs> Hell yeah! Before I get into the rest of the but why those, I actually wanted we got a lot of fan but why those this episode. Uh, like a ton. So I'm going to try to cover as many as I can. Um, But what I will do, and I'll probably do from this point on, is I will actually include all of these fan but why those in our show notes. Um, So if you want to read them, you can head over to butwhythopodcast.com and I will include everybody's. But for the sake of time, I shall only read a few. So I kind of ordered them by how we were talking about things. So this idea of it being a creative outlet and competition and um, a great way for creators, I kind of put all these uh, fan but why those up there. And uh, this is from David Dunlap via Facebook. For my family, it's not about being recognized or getting tons of pictures, but about doing something together and having fun. Whether it's crafted from scratch or purchased or thrifted, it's a journey to become the character for a few hours and spend that time together as a family, even if our cosplays are from different fandoms or eras. I love family cosplay. Yeah, oh, I, I do too. At the El Paso Comic Con, there was this um, this family dressed as like, uh, trunks like 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 the Vegeta family from Dragon Ball Z. Oh, that's, <laughs> like, oh, that's awesome! Kid was dressed up. That was super Mom awesome. was Bulma. The dad was Vegeta, and it was amazing. We I had the Pokemon it. family at Pack South. Where yes. they had, I can't even remember the two things, but I know there's it was Bulma. it was Misty, Ash, and the baby was Togepi. Oh, oh that's and cute. then they had Squirtle, and they referred yep. to all their kids as in cosplay. Like, come on, Squirtle! <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's awesome. That's awesome. <laughs> I actually think one of the best cosplays I'd ever seen was this two, like this two foot human who was wearing a predator costume. Yeah, that one's really good. And well, this was a family. His dad, it was at Austin Comic Con. What's a two foot human? (laughs) 
a baby, a child. Oh. <laughs> okay, I'll <laughs> make sure. I was, I was like, what? Not Peter Dinklage. It was a little baby or a little kid. <laughs> My apologies. Um, no, so the dad was really tall, and he was uh, he was alien. Um, a xenomorph. There we go. Yeah, he was a xenomorph. And then the mom was a, a female version of Predator, and then the kid was Predator. And it was super crazy and awesome. And I think they ended up taking home the group prize for that, actually. Oh, yeah, I bet. Like, it was insane. Um, have you seen – what was your favorite family cosplay? I've actually seen? never seen one in person. Really? Yeah, like, even at the conventions, I've, like, never seen one. I know most of the time I'm, like, distracted by, like, everything that's going on. And like shiny I've, statues? Yeah. Oh, yeah. All of it. All of it. <laughs> and then, I mean, like, I don't know if you've ever been to New York Comic Con or like a big no. one like that. It's just it's overwhelming and there's everything there. But there's a lot of amazing cosplayers, especially out on a certain area on the floor. So I've seen cute couple ones, but I haven't seen like a family. Ooh, Yeah, you need to see some family ones, mostly because the kids like I, there's something about like the kids cosplaying that it's just it's all, and, and I'm not and I'm not even particularly fond of children but I think <laughs> but I think they're cute as hell though <laughs> they are super adorable especially when they play their good role yeah like that little squirtle that was running around okay. I've seen people and, cosplay their dogs like they'll have oh, their dogs in cosplay yep. that's cute. I love that too <laughs> yeah I love that too Leia has an Ewok costume oh that's awesome Blossom has an edit costume and she hates it <laughs> she can't fit in the Ewok costume anymore. No, no, she probably can now. She's lost weight. Just get her a job at one. No, she is not a hut. Oh. Um. Okay. Anyway, next one. Uh, so our next one is from Jessica Cochran via Facebook. Um, uh, mostly because it's just really, really fun. I love making costumes, even though I'm definitely not the best seamstress. I like going to thrift, thrift stores, looking for materials, and I love looking at pictures of other people's cosplay online. I like it best when it's a group project, when my whole family gets involved and we all make costumes to match. I think I'm ultimately just a bit childlike or childish, and I never stop loving playing dress up and pretend. So I go to costume, I go to costume events, cons, ren fairs, theme parties, and I love every minute of it. I also like using cosplay in my aerials, as I've done trapeze routines as Mario and Ariel before. Taking the concept of a costume, designing it, putting it together, going to a con, and being recognized by people all brings me such great joy, and I always wind up beaming the whole the whole con. It was hard to be a Narcissa Malfoy, uh, uh nar 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 I can never pronounce her damn name. Nar Narcissa? Is, are there any Harry Potter fans? I am, I am one, but I never actually said her name out loud. Mm. Nar Nars? Because I know it's supposed to be Narcissus. So, okay. Okay. Anyway, it was hard to be Narcissa Malfoy because I, I was trying to make a, a sour face the whole time, but I just kept smiling. Uh, I kind of so, hope you get blasted because you mispronounced that name. <laughs> I'm going to. <laughs> I've only ever read crazy the Crazy about Harry Potter. I know. I've only ever read the name. I've never had to like say it out loud. <laughs> no, I think that's a great one that. because really, even though I wasn't on like the floor taking pictures, like knowing how much work we put into it as like a family, because it really was like a family project, was probably like the best part of doing it. So that's awesome. I like that one. I enjoy it. Um, I think it's cool because you talked about being on like the smile and joy. You know, I guess just since we've kind of been Quinn's handlers for the last three times, how much I guess fun you can tell it. Much she's sweating, you can't see, but yeah. taking pictures uh -huh. with everybody, and especially some of the little kids that like look terrified of her, but they really want to like say <laughs> hi, but they don't know what to do. Yes. And she just like really enjoys it. Yes, yeah. The second and probably one of the biggest, but why though is that cosplay creates a really inclusive space for cosplayers who may not have a place somewhere else. Um, obviously, if you grew up as a geek or a nerd, at least from like, I guess, I'll put a, like a, I don't know, I guess our generation, pretty much. It wasn't always the best. Um, I think kids have it a little better now, which is a really good thing. Um, but I think cosplay is a community and an inclusive community. And that's the biggest, That that's, a, that's, Another but why though, and so these fan but why those reflect that. Um, so this one is from Quinn, our cosplayer. 
Um, I started cosplaying because I saw other people doing it. I thought it was cool and was so stunned at the craftsmanship that I had to try it myself. I absolutely love the cosplay community. Everyone is so supporting, so friendly, and so helpful. It's like being in an extended family. You might only see them once every other year, but when you all get back together again, you're sick of Steve's thieves. Just with about everything you do, there are drawbacks. The obvious one is that cosplay is costly, no matter if you make the costumes yourself or buy them. A personal drawback is the stress that it puts on you. You often make a costume for a specific convention, so it becomes a battle against time. It's also stressful to show other people your costume. It's scary. You made your costume by hand, put your heart into it, and it's frightening to have a piece of you potentially being judged by thousands of people. Cosplay matters because it's inclusive. It gives people hope. Seeing your favorite character walking, talking, breathing, it inspires you. It makes you want to engender all those characteristics that endear you to that fictitious person. Just look at all the people who dress up like superheroes and visit sick children. And then I'm going to do, I did not realize how many we had. I'm just going to do two more and then that's going to be the end of it. And you can go to butwhythepodcast.com to read the rest. We, <laughs> which we really, really, so like, we really, really appreciate you guys sending us these and we want you to keep sending them, um, I, which is why I'm going to start putting them on the website. I want these to be highlighted because um, we want we want to interact with you all. So um, yeah. Um, so the next one is, from Corey McCoy um, via Facebook. Latino Comic Con yesterday was an important reminder why it matters. Kids get to see their heroes in real life doing things that help others. To be able to see people that look like them is huge. Some kids may not even may not have enough positive role models in their lives and that interaction can help their parents. Cosplay matters to me because myself and so many others have used it to make a real difference in our communities. My first real cosplay was a reward for my nephew as I taught him to read with comics. He really wanted to be Wolverine, but Logan needed needed his best friend, Wade. <laughs> and then the last one is from Jermel Floyd via Facebook. I've always wanted to cosplay, but I never knew how to sew. My mom tried teaching me once, and after 30 minutes, I thought I was a pro. But after failing to make my ex a costume, I thought cosplaying wasn't for me. But then life happened, and a year later, my mom taught me to sew again. This time, I actually listened and learned. So I started making costumes for myself, and it felt great. The creativity and challenges felt so worth it once it was all complete. Jesus, I remember wearing women's leather tights from Forever 21. Now I can make them. It gives me confidence, and that's important. Cosplaying is a community of amazingly supportive people who truly encourage others to succeed in all aspects of life. I know nurses, bus drivers, moms, and even government workers who cosplay. It brings it brings us together. You can't see skin tone underneath armor. You can only see hard work they put into the costume and the amazing way they happily interact with others. I love making costumes for others and introducing them into the world of cosplay. Even though there are problems within the cosplay world, nothing is perfect except Beyonce. If more people cosplayed, maybe the world would be a little less judgmental. What do you guys think? I'm going to leave it to Allie as the expert cosplayer. Why do you think cosplay matters to you? Um, Like a uh, just creative outlet mostly just to have fun. That's pretty much it. Because um, I'm not – I'm competitive with certain things, but I'm not competitive <laughs> with cosplay. Uh, I do like to add my own twists, and uh, it, it's mostly just to – do things to be creative to take like pictures of it create something and i know it sounds like i'm repeating myself but it's <laughs> it's um it, it's been really helpful for me especially because i know uh uh about a couple of years before i even started like i was at the lowest point in my life and then i used uh cosplay as an art form and then it just like it totally changes my mood too. It makes me really happy to do it, to have a hobby, to get myself into something. So for me, it's really important. And then obviously the community that you're with, with um, everyone that you can connect with, the fandom that you're dressing up with is really awesome too. And then to get to connect with other people who are dressing up is actually super awesome. Like it's a family, it's a big family and you don't feel alone. You're doing something creative. Cause I mean, God knows I could be doing something else that's not like that. It's, it's awesome, it's, it's an art form, it really is. 
Yeah, that's really awesome to hear. And then he just, you know, reading reading all of uh, the fan, but why those two, like the type of, I guess, empowerment that comes from being able to cosplay and the yeah. happiness it brings is just, it, it's awesome. Like it's more than just a costume. Yeah, it really truly is. As far as things go towards making this inclusive space for people in the community, when I was doing research, a lot of the things that came up were people who felt a little outside finally feeling in. And one of those are, I guess, people or women who would consider themselves geek girls because um, there is that mentality. I, I mean, I know it's happened to me. I don't know if it's happened to you, Allie, where it's the whole like, you're a fake geek girl type thing. Oh, and then people ask you like really intrusive questions. Like, do you know the name of the seventh version of this character? Oh, you don't? You're not the, You're not a true fan or something like that. Let me start out by saying I work at a retro video game store and I'm <laughs> the only girl there. <laughs> and the amount of stuff I get is, is something else. And most of the time, uh, a lot of people will ignore me and even though I had told them something about whatever game, they'll go to my other coworker and then they'll ask them and they'll repeat the same thing. I feel that pain. That happened when I worked at GameStop. <laughs> yeah, so then you know. You yeah. know. <laughs> I mean, and so like this type of like dismissiveness that happens sometimes, like this need to like prove your geek card. Um, a lot of people were, and I read a lot of, a lot of, uh, blogs from cosplayers who were just like dressing up as this character and putting this amount of time into it. Nobody could really argue that I loved this fandom and nobody could really ask me, you know, I, she was like, obviously some people did ask me, you know, to make sure I wasn't just dressing up as this character. She said, but by and large cosplaying had helped her. And um, other women, like the, the resounding thing was it, it gave that point of contact. Like nobody was talking about or trying to disprove that she loved this fandom. They were just wanting to know, oh my God, how did you do that? What did you watch to find that costume? You know, what version is this? And it, it gave it this immediate connection to somebody versus um, kind of like what Jermel said in his, like you, when you're in cosplay, you can't like you're not differentiated from other things like you can't see skin color i would argue even though you can't like obviously gender is a component like you just see the love of this character exactly um, yeah and that's a bonding moment for a lot of people i know i've seen people cosplay like something obscure and i'm like oh my god i know what that is i need to go talk to them like that type of connection that happened is something that has been really helpful for people who may feel ostracized within this community and then it's all cosplay also really helps people integrate into these spaces because of um, it gives people confidence. It helps people deal with social anxieties. Another thing that cosplaying has been moving towards, and I would say, at least from what I was reading from a few cosplay groups and forums, like cosplayers themselves aren't as bad when it comes to uh, a character uh, somebody portraying a character of a different race or a different size. So obviously, like, we know the internet's, like, a really bad place. Um, and people work their butts off for characters. And a lot of the times, like, the trolls on the internet will say really bad stuff if you're portraying a character of a different race or you're, um, or you're a different size than the character that you're portraying. Um, but at least a lot of the stuff that I've seen in, and I could be wrong on this, but I know a lot of the stuff that I've seen in, in the few cosplay groups that I'm in are actually, they're working really hard to really encourage members within their community to cosplay what they want to cosplay regardless of anything else. But at the same time, you do get the calls from the internet people who are like, authenticity, why is this brown girl being this not brown girl? Or yeah. why is this, you know, heavier set person Superman? Like that's, it can suck really bad. And I think I've read, I read a lot of articles written by people who had who had experienced that and it can make you want to shut down um but there are places within the cosplay community that you can go to and talk to and have that you know and have that reinforcement that this is just somebody being you know being a butt you know it's it, yeah. it, like your co your like, your cosplay is still valid like don't let them talk about that and i think the other side too that um cosplay really does for creating an inclusive space Cosplay is the ultimate form of like being able to represent what you love. And like, honestly, 
give this like give kids a super awesome like avenue towards seeing heroes in real life of any you know of anything and with as many cosplayers there are like there's probably a little there's probably a cosplayer that looks like a little kid and that like that little kid seeing that will like really make them happy so on this on this like i guess authenticity thing i guess a question i had to ask and i guess i was wondering so i don't obviously i don't really care like what the person is what I guess the only thing that I'm really not a, technically a fan of is like if somebody dressed up as Batman, but they colored their suit like red. <laughs> or, like when, or when they do, I mean, I've seen all the time where people take their characters, but they mix and match the colors, like, or some crazy thing. And I'm personally not a fan of that type of stuff. I don't know how, I mean, obviously it's a little different, but it goes to the, I guess, talking about the authenticity of the character. And so I was wondering, I guess, if that bothered anybody along with, obviously. I you know. only accept black suit Batman. <laughs> <laughs> More of their suits will be accepted. You'd be surprised what colors people do. No, I've stuff. seen. Yeah. I, yeah, I've seen it. I gotcha. I don't even like when they do it with sports teams with all the crazy gear. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I think, like, one of my favorite ones was this Run DMC Stormtrooper. It was a stormtrooper with the like that was like a tracksuit type thing, and it was it was awesome. That was I love it. <laughs> it sounds awesome. <laughs> I've seen it. Like I, I love seeing all the variants because I guess for me I'm just kind of like there are so many variants of different things out there yeah. like in the comic universe as it is. But then again, like I hate the way Iron Suit, uh, Iron Spider, Spider Man suit is. So I can totally understand personal preference on color choices. <laughs> What about you, Allie? I mean, because you said you like to put your own spin on things. Yeah, yeah. I, I don't know. I'm just, if I like something, I like something. But um, <laughs> I'm, I'm, not, I'm not too, I'm not too picky because there is creativity. And some people even do it as a joke, but they, yeah. they did it regardless. You know, you'll see like, like you said, Red Batman, they'll probably do like Hello Kitty Pink Batman just for fun because maybe someone made a meme of it and then they're going to take it to the convention because sometimes like memes are cosplays too. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Like you'll see a lot of that. Um, I would totally take a picture with Hello Kitty Batman. <laughs> but I also just really love Hello Kitty. So I'll take a picture with Hello Kitty anything. Anything, right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I mean, I've seen like actual, uh, cu actual couple at New York Comic Con both in Deadpool, one's bride, the other one's groom, and uh, it was like a proposal, but it was actually real. Oh, wow. That's awesome. Yeah, for me, it's still like a sense of creativity. Yeah. What about you, Adrian? Oh, I know. It probably doesn't really matter that much to me. Just because just like the overall theme of like cosplaying is like a different race, different size. One of the, re one of the big reasons why I personally don't like cosplay, I, I would like, if I ever did something, I'd like to be like authentic to it. But there's not very many brown muscular characters for me to do outside of like cyborg, like blade, Jax. John like there's Stewart. A, <laughs> John you Stewart. Green, like it's, it's like it's like, it's like a lantern. handful of characters that like yeah. I would feel comfortable doing. But you know, it's just personal preference. Like I, I don't, I wouldn't dress up as like Batman. I don't think I'm too brown for Batman. You could be Batman. I don't want to be Batman. I feel like you do the you do the Martha voice so well. God, no, please. Let's move on from Martha. <laughs> then you could be Batman. <laughs> if I did Batman, it'd be making fun of that movie. And I would just be yelling Martha throughout the entire convention. I totally want you to be Batman. <laughs> that would be awesome. only, only if you dress up as Superman and I can just follow you around asking why you said that name. Only if I can like look lost. <laughs> That works for me. All right. <laughs> Tax cosplays are picked out. Yep. We need to get for a Matt. video of you guys doing it from like across the hallway. <laughs> like just have Matt like just have Matt saying Martha to me and then like shot to you like all the way across and then you just yell, Why did you say that name? <laughs> Down. All right. We're gonna give you a run for your money, Allie. That's, yeah. gonna, that's gonna be the cosplay to look at for Pax. All right. I just wanna see Matt and King of the Hill Sailor Moon. See, that needs to happen. Yes, it does. I'll make it. I'll make it. Yes. I will totally wear it. Oh, that'd be I, so good. I'm not opposed to wearing things. Like I said, I still want to put the time in actually making them. <laughs> we should crowdsource you a costume. And the listeners get to pick it. Ooh, that would be fun. Yeah, that'd be fun. That would be really fun. Bobby, you'll see the moon out of that. So another part that comes that comes into the whole just, co you know, cosplay what you want to cosplay as and really just embracing what you want to do is the idea of crossplay. 
Um, and this is gender bending cosplay, and it's defined by uh, cosplaying as a character of the opposite gender, and it provides an avenue for reimagining characters, uh, reimagining characters, and using more and using a different type of uh, imaginative skill. Gender play cosplay uh, is also a subgenre of this, and this Can is I, a stylized. Sorry. Yeah. Sorry, I was gonna go with this gender bending. Uh, I guess it's kind of. I guess wonder this. I'm assuming. I don't know. I guess how you feel, but. I guess to me it's weird with the gender bending cosplay. I just want to put out there because like a lot of characters I don't mind, but there are a few characters I guess I do mind. But it's weird because like if I saw a female like Batman, I would kind of like eh, I don't really care for like that. But then if I saw a female like Spider Man or even Deadpool or even possibly I don't even know some of the other characters that I've seen or even like when Quinn does when she does Deathstroke, it do doesn't bother me at all. But for some reason there are yeah. a few characters out there that kind of like. Oh, like this yeah there was a female batman at el paso comic-con and she got mad when people thought she was batgirl ah but she was just, uh, yeah she was a female dressing as batman so I even though when i saw her, i was like oh that's a badass batgirl costume but she's like oh i'm batman yeah so. I, I could understand somebody getting mad at that though but also that that's all that there's a Batman picture behind Matt or Batgirl picture right behind him too. That was the first thing I thought was, well, there is a female version of Batman, <laughs> but obviously it's not Batman's costume. It's, and I think that's one of the things that's really like particular with cross uh, with crossplay is like taking that costume specifically and making it feminine. Um, I also think too, like, I think, I don't think Quinn really counts in gender bending or like crossplay necessarily. Because she like she makes Slade as Slade, like she doesn't make him as a female Slade, if that yeah. makes sense. Yeah, and she wears masks and stuff, so you would never well, know that that yeah. was a girl until she takes stuff off. Well, and and, and that's uh, well, I guess then the question is like, are we talking about just a female character, a female like dressing up as what would be a portrayed as a male character? Or are we talking about, I guess, a male character completely redoing the costume into a female character? See, and this is one of the things that I didn't find too much on a lot of like the sources I was looking at because gender bending cosplay would be taking a, a character of a different gender and making that character your gender. Exactly. And I Where, did that with Max Rokotansky. Yeah, that's oh, what okay, I did. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, so I did that as like Matt, Max Rokotansky and um and I and I turned into like a female version. Oh, yeah. so, okay. Yeah. Cool. And then I think, and this, if I'm getting this wrong, like, please at me, because I don't know too much about it. And the sources were just not really good at, at explaining it. So I do want to know more. If you have an article, send it my way. Um, and then there's like gender play cosplay where you're, where you're actually embodying the cultural ideas of what the, of what that other gender is while you're cosplaying. So like when Quinn does Deathstroke, she's actually doing male Deathstroke, if that makes sense. I oh. think that's where that comes into play, but I'm not too sure. Like my, yeah. Like I, Allie, she do you have any thoughts? Cause I'm getting a little confused now with this bending. Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, from what it sounds to me is that it, it, let's just say I, I dress up as Batman, but I actually Please. act like a male. Like I, I, I'm a male. So that, that's what it sounds like to me. Like, uh, I'm just cosplay. Yeah. Yeah, cosplay. Yeah. I guess yeah, I, would, yeah. I wouldn't cosplay. classify that as like gender bending if you're yeah. not bending the gender yeah. of the character. See, see, I, can I see think where, yeah. That's yeah. And that's what confused me as well because like both of these things were under crossplay. And when I think of like I think of like uh, what Quinn does as crossplay because she's actually as the other gender versus gender bending like what you did, Allie. Yeah. But again like the categories and subcategories were really murky um but it was i just thought it was really interesting because i mean we like we like this is like it's actually like gender bending cosplay is really uh really prevalent honestly i mean i did one yeah that's true so i actually see a lot of it um so and i don't know how much of that has to do with adrian's like um uh, uh like adrian explaining like there aren't a lot of you know muscular brown characters to dress up as you know there's even less muscular brown women to dress up as. So yes, you yeah. can be Iron Fist. <laughs> you can be tall and lanky. I don't want to be Iron Fist. <laughs> <laughs> I'd be Bobby Sailor Moon before I would ever be Iron Fist. <laughs> Just so we're clear. Uh, Allie, is there any character that you would not like want to like? I guess 
portray, I guess, a cross gender bend thing? Like I would not want to see it or I wouldn't want to do it myself? Both. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> I mean, I have a limited amount of what I want to do. <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't know. I don't, I'm, I'm, I'm open to anything. <laughs> I think that's kind of how I, I'm like, I just like, I just want to see like awesome cosplay. Yeah. I even like silly ones too. I mean, oh, it, yeah. it, silly ones can be the best ones sometimes. Yeah, they can. Yeah. I was going to ask about that eventually is like, cause I know some people since, you know, like I spent 500 hours, you know, doing this and then I see somebody that just drew something together, like with a cardboard box or something. Some people tend to take offense to that or something. So I didn't know how, I guess. But you... Sometimes some of them are pretty clever if it like, the Sims one, where they make it look all pixelated, oh, like if yeah. they're naked, and then they got the little green diamond on the top. Those are it's awesome. simple, but it's like, I was clever. Cardboard yeah. box diva from Overwatch is the best diva. So, with all the cosplay stuff, uh, there is there are obviously some drawbacks. One of the things that has happened with, and we kind of touched on in our true crime episode, like, women face, like, street harassment and harassment all the time. Um, it's no different. And then sometimes it can be worse when you're actually wearing a costume that is revealing and walking the floor. Um, so I can include this all in my show notes. There are numbers to like to go behind this. Um, but what you need to know for the most part is about 2014, uh, there were uh, reported incidents that actually made a lot of news, one of them being Adrian Curry uh, running down somebody who had groped her friend and hitting him with the butt of her Catwoman whip and waiting wow. until the authorities came. And so the thing is, is that people started, after this happened, after it got a lot of traction, uh, at least from what I found, it seems that more people started interacting with the conventions. And the conventions don't actually have statistics on how many reports that they get on this type of sexual, um, sexual harassment, sexual assault. Um, but what we do know is that conventions found it necessary to actually start sending their uh, staff organizers and their uh, programmers uh, to classes to find out how to make this, I don't wanna say stop, cause I mean, I, to like do their best to try and eliminate it and try to curb it. Um, so one of the ways they did this was including uh, cosplay doesn't, um, cosplay is not consent uh, markers on the badges themselves, including them in swag bags, um, putting, you know, just putting out notices and making it, making uh, con officials more open to actually um, for contact, like it was easier to find people. Um, a lot, like I said, a lot of the numbers are like from when that first happened, but it was large enough for the conventions to actually have to do something about it. Um, What's your experience with that, Allie? I haven't had any experience. The only annoying thing I've ever experienced is um, like at, at a big convention, um, I would be somewhat dressed up, just like, you know, one day looking somewhat post-apocalyptic, another day in a sailor say fuku, and then I would change. And then when I'm in my regular clothes, they actually stop and take pictures of me. But usually I haven't had any issues because my boyfriend is always by my side. So he looks scary. <laughs> no one wants to come around me. I think I mean that was one of the one of the main things that I was worried about going into the El Paso Comic Con. Cause not that like the Widowmaker costume itself is like super revealing, but it's like, you know, she's exposed it to some extent. And that was one of the things I was super worried about. But I think I'm an intimidating guy for the most part. So like everything was <laughs> fine. Like no one did anything. You know, people came up and asked, like, hey, can I take a picture? Hey, can I put my arm around you? Or, or hey, you know, is this okay? Is that okay? Kind of stuff. So we never, we didn't have any problems when she cosplayed, and I was very, yeah. very excited about that. And we even brought it. They even asked Yaya Han at her, um, her like AMA thing, and she said that she she felt like it was getting better. Yeah. In that regard, so I think it's That's I think good. I think it's getting better. Yeah, no, I think it definitely is. I think part of it from the con. I think the other part too is like because cosplay has gotten bigger. I think people are becoming more savvy savvy to the idea that hey, there is an etiquette to interacting with the cosplayer. Yeah, I think the handler thing helps too. Cause like if yes. someone's there, I think people are less likely to do that kind of stuff. So I, 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 I don't know how it would have been if I wasn't there, but at yeah. least when I was there, everything was fine. Everything went over without a hitch. Yeah. Thank you, Danny Ran. <laughs> <laughs> you just gonna call Danny Ran now? 
Oh you're the most God. Danny Rand out of all of the hosts on this podcast now. Yes. So you're Danny Rand. <laughs> um, but to go with that, I I think the fact that there are like handlers a lot, because I mean now when we at least from all the ones we've been to, there's definitely there's very few cosplayers that walk around that do not seem to have at least some yeah. sort of like handler or person yeah. or anybody with them in any type of form. So it definitely seems they've done they've definitely I guess adopted buddy system finally yeah i don't know if you've ever like even defined handler do this thing like we've been oh saying yeah do you want <laughs> but it's like just i was generally... hoping one of them would i was just saying it everybody else was <laughs> yeah like, like, i'm like thinking about it. i'm like oh yeah i was my wife's handler like that just doesn't well, sound do you want... <laughs> <laughs> well do you want to explain it adrian i mean just you just walk around with your the person who's cosplaying like like you did with quinn you made sure she didn't bump into anything you know, I made sure, like, if the gun got too heavy for her, I picked up the gun or I took pictures for her so people could take pictures. I gave her – I followed her around with my camel pack and just gave her water for eight <laughs> hours straight, just making sure that everything that they need is taken care of. Yeah. And, you know, and also warding off people. <laughs> <laughs> You're my boy, Danny. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. But I'm glad you haven't had any problems with the alley. And that – I think that – Yeah, so – Because I'm tall, too, so – I'm like an inch away from six feet. So people probably oh, see yeah, my feels me. and they're like, whoa. Yeah. You are yeah. an Amazon. I am. I No, I truly am. Yeah, I wouldn't mess with you. It's all good. <laughs> <laughs> Quinn wrote a blog kind of explaining the different types of etiquette that she thought was important when uh, at a convention and seeing cosplayers, especially ones you really want to take pictures with. Um, so I'm just going to go ahead and just highlight the ones that she said. Um, so first, if you want to take a picture of or with your cosplayer, make sure you ask first. Um, don't hog the attention of the cosplayer. Do not touch. That one I'm going to go into a little bit is because she said uh, that you should always ask before you touch a prop or the person because you don't know what parts of their armor could be really fragile or their, you know, their weapons. And people put hours and hours of work into this. Like, And then obviously like you just shouldn't invade somebody's personal space unless they invite you into it. I got a question because it's, because I know she has also mentioned, like, no tipping required. I don't know how, I guess, either, I guess, Adrian can answer for Stefani or Allie. I don't know if that happens no at all. No one ever tried to give her money. Okay. I was... That would be awesome, though. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I love gave her money. <laughs> you would be cosplaying at everything. Like, no one tried to give her money at all. Yeah, no, I don't. Uh, so she kind of went into that one. Um, so her next one after do not touch was no tipping required. And she said that it, it does happen, apparently, that people will try to like. Tip I've, we saw it once. It did happen once when we were with her. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, I didn't notice it. Oh, I'm also not aware of a lot of things. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then the next one is if they're relaxing, do not bother them. Oh, my God. Yes. Yeah. Like yes. you want to sit down? Let me sit down. Yeah. Especially if you're walking around in heels. Like when Safari sat down, like no one bothered her. I think one because she kind of has like an intimidating face, like when she's angry or like tired. So I, don't, I think that probably <laughs> helps. But like when we sat down or like she ate, you know, no one came up to ask her, like, hey, can you put your heels back on and stand back up again and take a picture with me? So. Yeah, no, I had that. I did have people stop uh, when I was at Anime Matsuri dressed up as Reese from Animal Crossing. Oh, mm -hmm. nice. And uh, I mean, like the heels I was wearing were painful. They weren't even like high or anything. It was just uncomfortable. And I just want to sit down and have a snack, you know, <laughs> drink some water. Like, let me be for a little bit. I think but, you yeah. know when to take a picture. And that would mostly be like, if, if I see that they're shopping a little bit and they're like, you know, talking to some of the vendors, just let them be. But if they're out on the floor, you know, right where like everyone's just like, standing up being displayed trying to take their pictures then that would be like the best time ever because they're ready for it you know yeah sometimes i feel like that is a tricky situation though because it is one of those at a larger con convention that you may never see that person again true and that is why you ask <laughs> well obviously that's why you ask but i know like the whole like you know like you see them talking sometimes like i know sometimes it's like oh Maybe we'll just like walk around in circles so we don't lose them or something. I've totally done that before. Not to be, not being said, not to be rude or anything <laughs> else, but it's like so there's literally times where you don't, you might never see that person again. And that's, that's true. Yeah. Uh, so, do you have any, I guess, etiquette tips to to add? We pretty much just covered it. Just, um, I mean, asking is number one because that would be considered as consent, um, and that's pretty much it for me. 
and let me relax when I need to. Like if I'm eating, <laughs> let me shove like the whole entire whatever I'm eating in my mouth for a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> that seems fair. That seems very reasonable. The last thing we want to cover um, is the fact that a lot of people are using cosplay to do good in the world, um, to do charity work and to uh, do, you know, community outreach and child outreach. And I think one of the most famous stories actually is of the 501st Legion's um, response to a girl who was bullied for liking Star Wars. And if you don't know who the five, uh, the 501st is, they're, um, I guess, AJ, actually, AJ, I want you to explain it because you like love them. Yeah, they're just they're just a global because it's like the five hundred first, and then you have like the rebel part of it, and you have like the Mandalorian mercs and stuff, and they just basically dress up in Star Wars characters depending on like which group they're part of, yeah. and they go to like hospitals and they go to charity events and stuff like that. So they are they've used their Star Warsness for good, and they're no matter like where you're at because they're a global thing. Like there's a five hundred first in your area, like yep. in El Paso, it's the the Red Sands Patrol, and every weekend they're at our children's hospital without without fail. So, and that's how it is uh, with uh, I believe I believe I think there's the Rebel Squadron, which would be kind of like because all of these are also like very specific. So, yeah. like the the Rebel Squadron would be anybody in the Rebel Alliance who I think aren't necessarily Jedi, and then you have the Saber Guilds who are specifically for Jedi. Yeah, um, and the Mandalorian Mercs with all of like the bounty hunter kind exactly. of stuff. So. Um, and then, and so they do awesome things. There's like Star Wars societies pretty much wherever you go. And the reason this got so much is, I mean, obviously it sucks being bullied for something that you love. And the 501st, yeah. when they found out about her, they built her a custom made um, stormtrooper outfit. And they were like, you know, we're here. You know, we, we got you back. You know, don't worry about those bullies. And that actually turned into a thing where once she outgrows that, she passes it on to other kids who who need that type of encouragement and inspiration. Um, so that type of outreach is really good. And I know that the Jaku Temple Saber Guilds here in Austin, um, they're they're for Central Texas. They do a lot of stuff for veterans and make a and make a and the Make Wish uh, Make a Wish Foundation. Um, raising money and they're at every convention um, that you go to to take pictures with them. And so like, I would recommend like, if you see um, Star Wars cosplay groups at a convention, uh, look at what they're actually doing there. Look at the, the make a wish information, find out where they're going to go next and stuff like that. Um, on top of that, you have cosplayers that dress up and go to schools and libraries. Um, so a lot of libraries have been utilizing cosplay to bring in people to dress like the characters in the books to get kids more involved in reading. And then of course, uh, in San Antonio, there's cosplay for a cause. Atlanta also has cosplay for a cause and um, they're spelled differently. Um, but it's just a group of people who love cosplay, but also want to use their cosplay to get involved in charity work. And the bulk of this is helping children. That, that I think that's a really great note to kind of land, uh, to kind of end on is that like cosplay is, are great hobbies, great competition, great creative outlets, great inclusive communities. And then you can actually use your cosplay to start impacting other people too. Yeah, for sure. I mean, it did it for me, so I completely agree. I think it would have been awesome being a little kid and like getting like hand, like getting a stormtrooper outfit or like seeing, you know, Wonder Woman come to my school and like, you know, encourage me at like physical stuff, you know, like, uh, cause I know that some of them go to do, you know how like every kid has to do like the presents like fitness tests or whatever stuff like yeah. that. It was Captain America, like in. Oh God, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Well, now you can have I, real Captain America. I think he's a war criminal now, but it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> um. But yeah. So. Uh. Yeah. I kind of. Yeah. I'm just gonna like end it there. And I guess any last thoughts, guys? Adrian. Uh. No. I mean, cosplay is awesome. Um. <laughs> we've like gone to conventions. One of my favorite things, like since we went to PAX from our PAX recap episode to the Elfaz Comic Con episode, one of my favorite things about conventions in general is the cosplay. And especially after Safwani did hers, I have like a brand new appreciation for it. And it's like now even my more <laughs> favorite part of cons because <laughs> uh, I know how much work goes into it. And, you know, being able to do good and stuff for like 501st and the Rebel Squadron and Saber Guild and stuff like that, I think is even, even a bigger plus because it's something to do outside of the conventions. Like you can take it. It's not just a Halloween thing, not just a convention thing. It's like a you can go improve people's lives with cosplay, which is awesome. 
What about you, Matt? Uh, yeah, I mean, going to sound, I guess, a little bit redundant, but yeah, just the fact that there's <laughs> the community aspect of everything. Cool. We, we've been to all the conventions we've been to. We try to check out all the cosplayers. We not only just taking their picture, but talking to them either like how, you know, like how, how they're doing. And I guess, you know, what it takes to make their costume and I guess why they decided to do this it's been interesting, especially as we've met a lot of people over the past like year. And you, Allie? Um, just, I mean, if you are wanting to cosplay, I would just say do it. Don't get too ambitious like I did the first time and want to do like four costumes for a big convention. <laughs> but, you know, do something small, practice a little bit, do your research, and just have fun. If you want to compete, complete, but mostly just have a good time. And that's pretty much it. So, Allie, where can they find you? Uh, you can find us on Twitch. Uh, we do stream uh, Sunday and Monday at 9.30, unless otherwise. Um, but it's Rick and Allie. And then for Facebook, it'll be the same thing, Rick and Allie. You know, play on words like Rick and Morty. <laughs> what, uh, what time zone is that, Allie, just for our listeners? Central time, my bad. Gotcha. So we go from, like, we'll do retro games to anything modern nowadays. It's just whatever we feel like. We did all of Outlast 2. And now oh. we're on, uh, we're doing the Necromancer on Diablo 3. Are you, um, are you going to do anything with creative, like with your cosplay stuff? I'm thinking about it. I'm also thinking about doing it with art because I am an artist. And um, the number one thing I also do is makeup because I love special Ooh. effects oh, makeup. Nice. So. Yeah, we'll be there. Do that. We'll be yeah, there. Yeah, that'd be awesome. Yeah, we're just getting it set that. up for that. And then we're also preparing for one more thing on YouTube. We're going to be doing Wasted Wednesdays. So on our Facebook, we'll announce that. that. Yeah, so we're going to get pissed drunk pretty much. And we're going to play uh, video games, like really difficult stuff, like probably speed run a oh. Mega Man or, yeah. <laughs> we will definitely include all of that in the show notes. Um, and I will include her schedules as well. Oh, oh do you have, uh, I guess, did you start your YouTube already or? We're in the process of it. Oh, okay. We'll definitely upload the streams on there for anyone who misses it. Um, yeah, so make sure you stop by, give them a follow, check them out. Um, I'm oh, I'm totally down for Wasted Wednesdays. Just <laughs> Hell yeah. Just watch that. So yeah, um, as always, you can find me at oh my Mithrandir on Instagram and Twitter. Adrian? Yeah, you can find me on Twitter at superreese93, S-U-P-E-R-R-U-I-Z 93. And Matt? You can find me on Twitter at datm18, D-A-T-T-M-1-8. And on the other side of the wormhole. We will be so getting we... back to that at a regular scheduled time. <clears throat> We've had some hiccups. So make sure if you think we missed anything this episode or you just want to hear us talk more about a subject, uh, let us know. And we uh, Matt will cover it in his little sideshow. And do you want to ask Allie the final question, Matt? What do you want the outro music to be? Uh, just that you could do that. Uh, no, <laughs> um, dang, I don't know. I'm kind of boring. <laughs> I All guess right. anything eight bit for me. Well, anything synth wave because I've been in that kind of mood. I don't know what synth wave is, Allie. No. <laughs> well, we're gonna um, Google it and throw it on there. Let's do there this. There you go. There you go. Yes, we'll, we'll surprise you. Awesome. Okay, thanks for listening, everybody. Bye. Bye. Bye.